Hey, everybody. It is Pastor Shane. I just wanted to jump in here at the beginning before the full-on show begins uh, to let you know that uh, this episode has been pre-recorded. We're not here necessarily with you live this evening because this evening we are featuring an interview with Dr. Beth Baxter, uh, a psychiatrist here in the Nashville area, talking about how to care for yourself, what it means to even have a normal reaction. What does that mean, a normal reaction to what's going on? It is a fascinating interview where she shares so much good advice. Uh, we just want to let you know that. Now, we are with you live. We're just there typing in the comment section, but what you see here in my face is not live. It's Tuesday afternoon. So uh, just to let you know that, uh, feel free to interact. Drop us questions uh, to questions at hborough.org. Uh, drop that in there. I'll try to even put some notes on the screen so you can um, know how to do that. Questions at hborough.org that we can address in future deep dives. Um, but for now, Here's the show, Deep Dive. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Deep Dive. I'm Amy, and we are so excited because this week we have the opportunity to interview Dr. Beth Baxter and kind of talk about our mental health during everything that is going on. So thank you, Beth, so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. I'm very happy to be here and hope that my experience can help um, those of us in the church make more sense of what's been going on. So Beth, to start us off, I had a question because I feel like there's a lot of people asking this because we're throwing around the word normal a lot and we're struggling to know what is normal, but I struggle with the question, what's a normal reaction to this if there is such a thing? And I was curious, what, what's a normal reaction to a pandemic like this? Well, I think the beginning of a normal reaction is that people will be depressed and anxious. Um, Putting it into more words, I mean, anxiety is often um, related to when is this going to end? Depression is often related to um, all these things that I can't do and how my life is impacted by this. Um, people are having these all the time. Um, norm, it's a normal reaction, like I said, to what's going on. Um, and also, it's important to look at how you as a per person normally, um, what issues there are for you. If getting angry is an issue, then you might find yourself getting angrier um, from time to time. If um, becoming, uh, we've talked about the germophobe stuff a lot. Um, other things like, for example, problems, um, psychiatric problems that people have um, often become magnified um, during this time. But back to the question about what's normal, I think it's normal to have some anxiety and depression these days. It's also normal to have what I call meltdowns when times when your anxiety and depression gets so bad that um, you can't control it anymore. It's very normal for this to happen um, during this time. Yeah, so so I w I would follow up with that and and kind of my wondering I guess is so are there particular things if we know that we have maybe a leaning towards some of those worries already the germs and um, you know anything that kind of pops up for us regularly in our lives um, is there any way that we can be extra mindful of those things now so that we perhaps don't get to those points of meltdowns I mean is that possible. Yeah, it is possible, I think. Um, it's it's important to also know what usually works for you to make yourself feel better. Um, we're talking about um, ways to de decrease stress hormones in your body um, by exercise, talking to folks, <clears throat> doing hobbies that are um, rewarding for you. All these things can help reduce the stress hormones in your body um, control these so that your anxiety and depression don't get so bad. Um, also so that your normal symptoms of what you're experiencing don't get so bad. I think when you find yourself 
in a place unable to function. Um, you just, you know, you can't do social things or occupational things. Um, at that time, it's good to try to step away from the situation. You know, another thing I recommend that people do is really limit the amount of news they watch. I recommend that, that my patients not watch more than one or two hours a day. Um, and try try to have enough distractions of things other than COVID-19 uh, to help decrease those stress hormones that we are always having. That's interesting because um, one of the things that jumps into my mind immediately is that one of the tools that we would use to have more social interaction could also be a tool that and I, I know there's studies have confirmed this in terms of some social media it could be a it could be something that is amplifying that anxiety because if you say I want to go on something like Facebook um, and interact with some friends these days it would be really hard to go on there and not um, interact to some degree with the news that's a really complicated question uh, these days of how do you get that interaction. Um, I, I had a follow up question and this is more, this is more towards, um, I think one of the really complicated things now is one understands if we have really severe COVID, what you do, you know, you go to the emergency room, hospitals are doing things like that. But if we found ourselves in a situation where we felt like we were, I mean, just really in a dangerous place mentally, do you have advice on you know, what are the avenues to pursue? Because I know there's some hesitancy with engaging our medical community in the same way because, you know, hospitals are the center where, you know, COVID patients are being treated. What What's your advice for how people should, you know, sort of rescue themselves from those situations? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I would say rely on your natural support system. That's one thing that we're trying to get everybody to do. You know, reconnect with all those people in your lives that make you feel better. Um, sometimes people have therapists, sometimes people have psychiatrists, they have parents, they have spouses, they have friends. You know, use your normal natural supports at a time like this. I, I feel like this is one of those things where we also need to remind ourselves as, as fellow Christians that one of the things we've been placed in each other's lives. So we, those of us who maybe, maybe aren't struggling with something like this need to build up some you know, resiliency, I know it's a word we're going to talk about later, but um, we're going to build up some extra time in the back of our minds to say, I need to be making myself available or I need to be more, more patient, particularly because I know there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of needs. I see that as an enormous ministry opportunity, what we owe to each other in this time. It's a real, a real challenge for us as uh, followers of Jesus. <music> We are all living with a lot of stress right now. And I know there are kind of biological responses that we have when we are in very stressful situations. So I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit more about um, what's going on biologically, but also are there avenues that we can go down that might be beneficial to us during those times? What to do if you find yourself in a situation where, um, your mental health is um, deteriorating. Uh, like I've mentioned, I think um, you need to be able to track your anxiety and depression. Those are two symptoms that come up at a time like this. And to kind of remove yourself from the situation and find a good distraction, um, that's a kind of a, a academic term, but it's good to find... You know, rely on your natural support system, rely on the things that you normally do that make you feel better. Like I like to bake. So, you know, I'm planning to bake a lot. Um, you know, knitting, uh, painting, you know, exercise is a big deal. We see, if you look outside, you know, there's a multitude of people walking up and down the street with their dogs or jogging or with friends, you know, and that's very important. Um, I was talking before about the um, impact that stress hormones have on our body. You know, the stress main stress hormone is cortisol. 
and it's released when you're in a traumatic or, or stressful situation and it puts the body into overdrive. It's, it's good for a, a minute of time because it, it pro, promotes the fight versus flight kind of response, helping us take care of ourselves at that moment. But it also has a lot of very negative effects in the long term. It makes you really anxious. You, know, you can't get out of that stressful situation that triggered it. Um, and so you want to prevent those stress hormones as much as possible from overtaking yourself and doing exercise, uh, things that are therapeutic, talking to your natural support system. You know, all this is important ways to decrease those stress hormones. So one of the things I'm concerned about is that, uh, you know, obviously we're dealing with a loss. Some people are losing family members here and we're gr There's lots of things to grieve right now. Um, you know, losses of jobs, just, you know, the, the sequestering of us from one another is something to in, a, uh, in and of itself to grieve. So I I'm curious, um, how do we, how do we grieve in a time like this when we can't necessarily be around each other? Well, you know, I think FaceTime and Zoom have um, become uh, everyday terms in everybody's lives right now uh, because that's how we're connecting with people physically a lot of times. Uh, I know I have a connection of people I keep in touch with via text. While when you're doing it, it's like, this really feels real. I get, I'm really getting a lot out of this. I'm able to like, you know, express what I want to express and get the, get the feedback that I'm looking at. You know, we all talk about the fact that, especially in texting, you know, we lose the context of the situation. And sometimes what, what we say when we're texting is taken a different way than what we mean for it to be. So you know, FaceTiming, Skype, Zoom, all that is uh, increases how present we are with other people. And I think that relying on those um, avenues to help us um, connect with each other are going to make a big bit of difference in a time like this. I am a mom. I, I have a daughter who is 12. You you know that. Um, I have concerns for um, her being this age, for all kids being, you know, with this being the context with which they are growing and living right now. And I have concerns about um, her being able to understand what is going on and how much does she need to know. And over a long term, what might be the kind of developmental um, concerns that um, that come up for us because they are developing their minds and their bodies during this time. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point. Um, children in general will tend to mirror um, the reaction that they're presented with. Meaning, if you you know talking to them is very important and letting them know what's going on, but they'll likely take their cue from you in terms of how they react to it. I had a patient, I think it was yesterday, I was talking to him and I was concerned about his son because his son is a very anxious boy. And I was concerned about how his son was managing the situation. He said, well, I sat down and talked to him, told him what a virus was, told him, you know, that we're in the middle of a bad situation, but that we can wash our hands a lot. And, control who we're around. And he said, uh, okay, thanks, dad. I understand. Thanks. You know, so they tend to mirror our own reaction to that. I think encouraging them to talk about what their feelings are about it. I know that sounds really straightforward, but um, encouraging them to talk at any time, encouraging them to have alternative ways to connect with their friends on FaceTime and other things, because I think we know and we talk about how social kids are and how it's impacting them not to be able to talk to their friends right now. 
Yeah, we uh, we talk to our daughter about it uh, sometimes, and she we let her express her why she's sad, sad to not see her friends, and she tells uh, she tells us quite frequently the things she wants to do when the COVID virus goes away. It's very it's very sweet, and it, um, you know that's why we, I know we wanted to talk to you about that because it's just you know you see that and it's heartbreaking as a kid because you think. Man, kids shouldn't have to think about things like this. Uh, it's such a such a challenging time to be a parent. I'm also reminded of like Anne Frank's diary, which occurred you know, during World War II, and it gave us such a um, an insight into what what a person's experience was like and what a young person's experience was like during that time. So <clears throat> their perspectives are very important. Um, I this is kind of going into another area um, in terms of what we can hope to get from this um, experience. One thing uh, a patient said to me today, as a matter of fact, was that she thought there's going to be a lot of literature and art come out of this Mm -hmm. experience, like bad times often create opportunities for um, artistic expression. And I think that that is going to happen down the road. Um, another question you ask sometimes is, uh, what is the best TV show or book to to do right now? Anything that doesn't have to do with COVID right now <laughs> is the best thing to do. You know, down the road, we'll want to reflect on this and talk more about it and, you know, get into this COVID issue more. But right now, we need to get ourselves out of it as much as we can. And that will help us deal with the realities in our life, how it's affecting us. Because distraction is actually a, a major cognitive behavioral tool to use. That um, it's in dialectic behavioral therapy, which is a kind of cognitive behavioral therapy we use for folks. And DBT or dialectic behavioral therapy is being used all the time by many, many people in terms of understanding how to distract yourself and understanding how to live in the moment of the, of the Mm -hmm. experience. So Beth, I know that you really love and value the work of Brene Brown and I do as well. And she spends a lot of time talking about vulnerability and resiliency. And so I'm wondering in in your mind to you, what are the ways that vulnerability and resiliency um, could benefit us during this time or what, um, what kinds of ways might we struggle with finding resiliency and are there things that we can do to help build that skill um, even during this time? Well, when you talk about um, vulnerability, I think of I think of being able to stay in the moment and being able to sit with your feelings in the moment and even express them. Um, you know, right now, uh, we're not into multitasking these days. Most people are um, don't have that as um, something that controls their life like it used to control ours. Um, so being in the moment, being able to express your feelings that you're having right at, right at that time, um, being open and real with people in terms of vulner- what vulnerability is about, um, the, that vulnerability is a big tool to be able to, um, I want us to be able to grow, but to be able to take care of yourself um, and have healthy relationships. Um, we talk about the term resiliency, and that is kind of like a phoenix rising out of the ashes. We talk about good things that can come from bad situations, um, that, and there's hopefully a lot of things that can come from this situation. For example, um, hope that our communities will be stronger and that we'll be with each other in ways we weren't before, um, helping to slow us down. You know, we're a a very fast-paced society, and this has kind of brought a lot of that to a screeching halt. So being able to slow down and be in the moment are very important ideas that 
you know, Brene Brown brings to us that we can borrow now. Um, being intentional, meaning uh, what we're saying and doing is is uh, what we're actually thinking and feeling. Uh, that sounds really easy, but it's really not. Um, being able to say or do what you're feeling at that time is a big skill to have, and it's a skill that you have to develop from practice. Um, so I talked about living in the moment. Um, we were talking about resiliency um, and making things even better than they were before. Uh, we talked about the the thought of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We talk about that a lot in terms of uh, a way to uh, grow from a difficult experience, and that's definitely going to be the case with this experience. That we will all grow from this in ways that we didn't see it happening initially. Yeah, that's I certainly share that hope. I certainly share that hope about art and creativity and and maybe a chance to reevaluate our priorities in life if people can find themselves in that place to you know take that task seriously. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff we've been talking about is really in the realm of self-care. It's certainly it's certainly touching on larger relationship dynamics, but I was wondering if you had any advice on the much more relational end of it in terms of marriages, families, multi-generational families, because, um, you know, my house, we're dealing with three individuals and a cat who are now seeing way more of each other than that we've probably seen of each other since our daughter was born. Um, and, you know, so are there, are there just general practices or attitudes or things like that, that you might be able to speak to about how to, um, use this as a, a time for relationship growth, but also the, to make sure that we're fair and good to one another? Mm -hmm. Well, this just definitely offers an opportunity for us to be with our, um, immediate family members and those who we are, um, find ourselves in, in touch with the most. Um, it's a, a very special time to be with those folks more than you were before. Even if you're working from home, there's a lot of time that you're not working when you're at home and you're around your immediate family members. And like you're saying, Shane, this can present uh, an opportunity. It can also be difficult to be with three people and a cat in a small house for a long, a long period of time. Um, so it's a challenge to us. It's a challenge. You know, we're talking about Brene Brown and her vulnerability. It's a challenge for us to be able to express what we're actually feeling at the time. And that will help our communication with each other. It will help ourselves. But being vulnerable in relationships with all this time we have with folks is very important. So every week we like to give you recommendations on things that we think you might enjoy, things that might make you smile, make you laugh, give you a little bit of that escapism we've been talking about, those distractions. Uh, and so we have uh, asked Beth, Beth, what, what things Beth has done as well. We're asking Amy, myself, but uh, Beth, what about you? What are things that you enjoy during doing during this time that distract you, that you enjoy, that you would commend to other people? Well, most of the first, but... I something I do that I enjoy a lot is baking and knitting. And I was telling um, telling Amy that um, before Easter Sunday, I did a binge watch of all the Easter um, services you all had. Mm -hmm. I sat there and knitted for a couple hours. While I was watching that, mm -hmm. and that was so rewarding for me to be able to have all that time to knit and look at you guys and hear you talk and. You know, so that knitting was really key for me then and watching you guys baking. And now, you know, a big a big limitation of baking is there's not much flour to be had. Mm. These days, if you ever looked in the flour aisle, it's really um, empty. Uh, so finding ways in which, you know, you can enjoy yourself like we're talking about. Yeah. 
Uh, so for me, my wife and I have been watching uh, the first season and now we just started the second season of Killing Eve. It's available on Hulu and uh, I believe it's AMC, one of those something. It's I mean, it's definitely for adults. You're not going to watch this with your kids, but it's a it's a really sort of interesting murder mystery sort of thing. It's a few years ago. There's two seasons out. The third season, I just believe, started. So it's a great time to watch it because you could catch up real fast. It's British style. It's BBC America. That's what it is. And so each season's only eight episodes. Uh, Sandra O oh won the Emmy for it. The, the other lead actress, I'm sorry, I forget her name. She won the Emmy the following year. It's really enjoyable. Um, it drives my wife a little bit crazy because, uh, you know, it's like when we watch things, temporary suspension of disbelief. And so sometimes when a character does something dumb, it makes you mad. I'm okay with that. Ashley's not. <laughs> and that's kind of a joke in our house. Uh, but we both enjoy it. So Killing Eve, it's on Hulu. Another thing on Hulu, and Amy, I think this one, I'm saying this one for you because I want you to watch this, is because there's a documentary that used to be on HBO, but now got released on Hulu called McMillions. And I think I've recommended it on here. And it's about the scamming of the McDonald's uh, uh monopoly thing. And so it's on Hulu now. So people can now watch it that aren't, uh, you know, subscribers to HBO. I started watching McMillions. Yes. It is crazy. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, it is what is nuts. this world? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I co-recommend that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then my, uh, my recommendation is for folks who are on Instagram, but I think this is something and cuteness of what I'm about to tell you about. So on Instagram, there is an account called um, Mr. Pokey and it's P-O-K-E-E and it is a hedgehog. So it's this I've little, seen this. I've seen this. It's, it's the cutest thing ever. It's adorable. So it's this little hedgehog and he has little socks. <laughs> he has little socks and he travels all over and his best friend is a cat named Herbie and they have all the photos together and it will make your day. And I check it several times a day just to see, have they posted more pictures of this hedgehog and best friend's cat? So check that out. Okay, so oh, that's a fancy cat. That's like a it's mm -hmm. like one of those little bingo looking cats. Now that's a little too cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's cute, and that's much cuter than what I saw. But I've I actually didn't see this. I actually saw something with a hedgehog yesterday as well, and it's this guy that like set up like a an American Ninja Warrior obstacle course in his living room for his pet <laughs> hedgehog, and then films it and then put like produces it up with commentary like it's a like it's Hedgehog Ninja Warrior. So <laughs> it's so hilariously dumb, Mister yes. Pokey. There it is. There yep. it is, Mister Mister Pokey. Just <laughs> check out that delight. Oh, that's. Amy, that is too cute. They're watching Disney movies together. Can you see this? They're I know. Watching. With the lights and blankets. I can't oh, take it. <laughs> oh, that's too cute. Oh, man. That's that's like painfully cute, Amy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, you know, you can watch this archived, all those sort of things. Like our YouTube channel. Um, share us with a thousand friends or more, all those things you're going to do. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I know most of this was recorded because of the interview with Beth, but you know, we're here watching it with you in the comments. One of the things we're starting, and I just want to make a plug for this, is we're trying to do a lot more of the interactive content and things like that. And one of the things we're very, very interested in are your questions. And they could be, you know, silly, simple questions. They could be deep questions. And we want to engage those. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to be having just a quick little like live thing on our Facebook page, a live drop in that you can uh, interact with one of us staff members that are going to be, you know, talking about what's going on, uh, answering questions, highlighting things coming up. We're also launching a uh, Thursday afternoon office hours where I'm just going to be on Zoom. We've emailed out the link to everybody. You can drop in and say hi. It'll be like a party sometimes. It'll be like me just staring at a computer sometimes. All those sort of things. It's just we want to be available to you. Uh, if you want to talk about something serious, if you want to just check in and say hi, if you want to say very nice things to me or to Amy, you know, whatever whatever it is, we would we we just want to make ourselves available to that. You know, every Wednesday night we'll be continuing to do this deep dive live. Hopefully it's something you enjoy. We, we are setting up interviews in the coming weeks with all sorts of interesting 
uh, folks um, that will be able to speak to how the church is responding to this, what 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 it means for the church going forward, all these different aspects of life. What how how as Christians do we continue to do ministry in this area where we can't be with people in the same way? And so uh, we want to be able to sort of tickle your funny bone or not your funny bone, but your thought bone. Your I don't know. That's a terrible way of saying that. I apologize. Um, <laughs> um, but just be thought provoking for you in the coming weeks. Amy, you got anything to add? You got anything to plug for yourself? New, new mm. television show you're launching? Oh, no, no, I'm not, not launching anything myself, but I do have to get one more thing in because it's too great not okay. to mention right here at the end. So you can make a phone call and it'll be the best phone call ever. That phone number is one eight seven 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 mickey and that is because Disney is doing nighttime shout outs and you can select if you want to hear from Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse or a couple of the other characters every single night. Wait, so, and by shout outs, what do you mean? Like you call they them? They talk to you. Yeah. So you, you call in and then they give you like a good night message. That is very nice of them. I know. So that that would be not a personal plug, but kind of because I love Disney. <laughs> we, we have done the, uh, we have done the Disney princess stories on the Google now play thing. And where it's very funny to hear our daughter up in her bedroom, like yelling at her Google thing to tell her stories of Jasmine on a horse race or something. It's uh, it's pretty, they're pretty clever with that stuff. Those Disney people. They are. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you every time we do this. Uh, we hope you had a lot of fun. We hope tonight you really learned some things about caring for yourself. And and I know in our conversation with Beth, even off air, um, the biggest thing I think she just wants to communicate is is what what is normal, you know, normal, these reactions that we talked about, it's very normal to be anxious in this. And so you don't need to beat yourself up if you're going through that. You know, the challenge now is how do we manage that in healthy ways? So um, we're really thankful for Beth. Uh, tons of thanks for just a great conversation and her time and willing to share her heart with you. So uh, yeah, any other things to thank Amy before we head out of here? No, I just thank everybody for watching, um, chatting, and please continue to do that. Yeah. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. Have a great day. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.